Anyway, uh, I'm going to be preaching um, from <laughs> Mark chapter 1, verse 40 to 41. And uh, I guess the title of this sermon is Open Lines. Uh, I thought I'd just keep it to that. That's the title of the series. I love that title, actually, now. I, uh, Rachel came up with that, Open Lines. The lines are open to heaven. I don't know if you know that. I don't know how you feel about your relationship with God whether it depends on how you're feeling, whether it depends on what your actions have been, whether it depends on, on who, who you think you are, whatever it is, the Bible says that the lines to heaven are open for you, for you, for each one of you. We have open lines to heaven. And by the way, I really like that artwork. Is that, who is that person, Johnny? Is that, uh, it's, not a, it's not a Bollywood film? Okay, I thought it was, uh, what's his name? Uh, Khan, Salman Khan. I thought it was Salman Khan. I thought that would be cool. It kind of looks like him, if you think about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Kind of looks like someone. Okay. I don't mind if it is. It's just being human. Okay. <laughs> Mark chapter 1, verse 40 to 41. A man with leprosy came to Jesus and begged him on his knees, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus was indignant. He reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. Immediately the leprosy, leprosy, leprosy left him and he was clean. This is an interesting story. We're talking about prayer, right? The whole thing about prayer and you and your prayer life and me and my prayer life is we often think that God isn't really willing to hear us. We often approach God with this Sort of apologetic, God, hey, if you're there, I want to talk. I'm sorry what I did last night. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry I didn't pray the last 20 days. I'm sorry, God. You've you got to understand something about this story. A leper came to Jesus. A leper, the worst of society at that particular point. That was a nobody in society. And said to Jesus, listen, listen, Jesus, if, if, if you're willing. And it made Jesus upset. It actually made him indignant. Indignant. He was upset that this person would say to him, what, what? It's almost like Jesus was like, don't you know who I am? I'm Jesus. Of course I'm willing to heal you. Have you ever been to that auntie's house and you just know if you say no to her food, she's going to get upset at you? She's not going to kick you out. She's not going to kick you out. She's not going to do anything. But you know that she's going to be indignant. You ever had that indignant treatment? Hand up if you've had that. You've just, you've just had that treatment. You're like, I know that if I say no to this food, even though I had a meal before coming, if I say no to this, that auntie is going to be really indignant. Who's, who knows what I'm talking about? You say, oh, no, auntie, I'm hungry. And she says, okay, I'll give you more. <laughs> I love those aunties. I love those aunties. We've got some in our church and I, I love them all. But that's how Jesus was. Would you, would you heal me? Would you be willing to heal me, God? Of course. It's the same with your prayers. When we approach God, I don't know how your fast has been, how your, your last week of prayer has been. You've been approaching God with, with an apology in your heart. I'm telling you this morning, stop doing that. Stop. And just approach him because he is willing to hear you. He is willing to hear the cry of your heart. He is willing to say, hear whatever you've got to say. The Bible says in other scriptures, he already knows what you've got to say even before you say it. He knows. So it's not like you're going to come up with some magical thing to impress God. You can't impress him. He's God. He's God. He created you and me and everything. So, like, he's kind of creative. We, we think that we, we, need to, we need to do things in order to, to make him happy before he'll hear us. No, that's not the case. He'll hear you. And I think when Jesus is in heaven, when we approach him with the approach of, oh, God, I'm not sure if you're hearing me right now, I, I think it might make him a little indignant still. It's like, God, you don't know me yet. You don't know how much I love you. You don't know what lengths I went to get you. 
I, you don't know what lengths I, I came down from heaven to get you in back into the kingdom of heaven. Indignant. He is willing to hear you. He is always willing to hear you. He is always willing to take you back. He's always willing to accept you. He's always willing. He'll always be there for you. He's willing to hear your prayers always. So Matthew chapter 7, 7 to 11, it says this. It says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And the one who knocks the door will be opened. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? Seek and you'll find him. Seek and you'll find him. It's simple. He's willing to hear you. He's willing to meet you right now. He's willing to do something right here in this place with you. Just got to seek him. I remember, if you excuse me, Harry, when Harry first came in to church, one of, one of the days he came and stood here and he said, Ryan, I'm really not sure about this whole Jesus thing. I'm not sure what I believe. I'm not sure what I'm, I, I, I don't think I believe in all of this. I'm really not sure. That was his whole thing. He wasn't sure. So I said, Jesus, we'll meet you where you're at, Harry. That's all I said. And he's like, oh, well, he'll come to me. He'll meet me where I'm at, even though I'm in this place of confusion about him and whether or not I believe him, he'll still meet me. I said, yes. And that was the thing that got Harry into the kingdom of God. That was, that was a turning point. Because God is willing. Seek and you'll find him. If you, the, the, the Jesus talks about in, in another part of the, the Bible, the, the mustard seed. If you just have faith like a mustard seed, mustard seeds are like this big. They're like tiny little things. Tiny little things. If you have that much faith, and if you can seek him with that much faith, you're going to find him. You're going to find him. You're going to find him. Seek and you'll find Knock, and the door will be open. Anyone ever knocked on a door that hasn't been opened? You ever been for that job that you didn't get? You ever tried to go and meet that person and they didn't show up? You ever been stood up for a meeting? Don't you hate that feeling? It never happens with God. Knock, the door will be open. Simple. Knock and the door will be open. See, the reason I'm teaching you this is because I think, I just feel in my heart that we still got to get across the line to everyone here in this church that a prayer life is not just a religious act that you're supposed to do to, to, to because we're Christians or whatever you want to call us. You, 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 you pray because the doors are open. You pray because the lines are open, because heaven is waiting for you to talk. Because God is actually waiting for you to knock. He's actually waiting for you to seek Him. And He knows that when you begin to seek, that He will be there and you will find Him. Wherever you're at. Wherever you're at in life. And then it says, ask and you will receive it. That's crazy. My little boy Elijah. We just came back from Australia. My little boy Elijah, a few months ago, maybe a year ago actually. One night, said to me, Daddy, I'm, I'm really missing Australia. I'm really missing Australia. And uh, it was when Willow was born. Um, there, was, you know, there was no way we could afford the trip for all of us to get back to Australia. And I said, okay, well, why don't we pray? Elijah, why don't you pray to Jesus that somehow God will provide the funds so that we can get back to Australia and have a nice long holiday? He said, okay. And he asked. And sure enough, a year later, we get back to Australia. Three weeks. 
three weeks. God's good. He provides. You can ask God. You can ask God. I don't know what your situation, what your job situation is. I don't know what your dreams are. I don't know what your vision is. But why don't you start asking God about it? Rather than looking to this guy and that guy and this thing and that thing. Just go to God. You'll be surprised. I've, this works in every aspect of our lives. I ran a business in Australia for three years. Before that, I was, I was employed in, 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 out in the workforce. And I found even in business, this would work. There was this one company that I could not nail. I knew that if I got them, uh, I would have a steady bread and butter kind of income that I knew that would just keep on rolling over every week. It was one of those kind of contracts. I wanted that contract. I couldn't get that contract. I just couldn't get it. I prayed, God, God, give me, I want to get in one of these companies. It was a very big, so a global company that looks after uh, all sorts of retail chain stores across the world, actually. Uh, and uh, it was for the air conditioning. And I, I, I remember praying, God, I need to get in with someone like this so I can make this business grow. And I would ring them and it was like empty, the, the phone would ring out. Uh, I'd get a secretary, you'd get some random, you'd get, and I just, one day I actually just felt, one day, it was just the weirdest day, I was at home, had no work, it was like one of those forced days off, which are the worst days, you, you, I know you guys who, who are in the entertainment thing and all of that have those stupid days where you're like, I just wish I could have a holiday, but here I am, I've got no work, I was like that, okay, um, <clears throat> anyway, like, I just felt the Lord say, pick up the phone and ring that good company. I said, okay. And just like at that very moment, th this guy picks up the phone. He says, hello. I said, look, I'm Ryan Waters. I've, I run a, a, a contracting company. I, wanna, I want to um, I wanna work for your company. I, I do this, that, and the other. He said, how did you get this number? And I said, well, I just got it off the internet. He said, well, funnily enough, just today, I had to fire my contractor because he's not been showing up. He's been... He's been been doing all sorts of dodgy things. And we need someone straight away. Can you come in tomorrow? Yeah, man, I'm there. I'll be there. I'm there. I'm, I like got over there the next day and I picked up thousands of dollars of work. Thousands of dollars of work. And God just set up that meeting. You can ask God. Are you looking for work? Stop looking to man. Look to God. Trust me, it works. Trust him. Just don't give up. Just don't give up. I think often we, 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 we give up before God can actually come through. Don't give up. Don't just keep pressing on in. Keep pressing into him. He will make it happen for you. <clears throat> Ask and you will receive. Amen? Take everything to prayer. You know, when we are submitted, and we've submitted our whole lives to his will, there's a favor that comes upon our lives and rests upon us. He answers prayers. He's willing to hear your prayers. Why don't you look at the person next to you and say, he's willing. He's willing. He's willing. Say it a little louder. I think they just need, I think people will need to hear it. He's willing. Amen. So be confident. He's willing. So be confident. Just be confident. Hebrews 4 verse 14 to 16 says this, Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has accepted, uh, who has ascended into heaven, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith, faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Let us approach God's throne with, of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Approach it with confidence. You can approach his throne with confidence. No problem. No problem. Just come. And the reason why is this. All the reasons why we feel ashamed and insecure about approaching God and his throne is all of those reasons Jesus is actually able to empathize with. 
because he was faced with all the same temptation. He knows what you're going through. He knows your weaknesses. He knows your vices. He knows your sin. He knows your mess-ups, your muck-ups, broken relationships and this and that and the other things that you would prefer to keep hidden in that little back cupboard over there for nobody to see. Or maybe it's over there. Nobody really knows, but he knows. He knows. And yet he is waiting for you to approach him. In fact, he's waiting for you to approach him with confidence. Confidence. With confidence. So just come, whatever the weakness, whatever the need, whatever forgiveness is needed, whatever help is needed, there's mercy for it all. Mercy for it all. The crazy thing about me and being a preacher, being a pastor, is um, uh, I'm just a normal person, as you know, if you know me. Um, There is nothing too special about Ryan Waters. And uh, I have bad days. Anybody else have bad bad days? I have days. In fact, I have bad weeks sometimes where I'm meant to preach for you all and I've been preaching for you all like five weeks prior, week after week, week after I'm coming up with content. I have these weeks every now and again where like I'm sitting in front of my computer and like in my brain, there's just people doing cartwheels. Like there's just nothing going on. It's just a waste of space. I just can't get anything happening, get anything going. My kids are going bonkers. Elijah's coming in and out of my office wanting paper from my printer to draw and Willow screaming and, and Rachel's trying to handle all of that. And like uh, then I can hear all the beeping of the cars, beeping, beeping and all of that sort of stuff. Everything just gets to me. You ever have weeks like that? I'm like, Ugh! it's like the coffee's not working. Give me another coffee. It's not working. I'm still grumpy. And then you go to go to sleep and then Willow wakes up and she's teething or whatever. Oh, man. I have these weeks, right? where I just say to God, God, if you don't come through right now, I'm screwed. I'm going to stand in front of this little church of mine and uh, I got nothing to say, God. I don't know what to say. I found that those days are my best. So many times people just come up to me and say, Ryan, that was the best you I've ever heard you preach. And uh, you did so well. It's so anointed. God did this, that, and the other in my heart. And I'm like, great. Great. That's amazing. That's amazing. In our our weaknesses, he's strong. So we can come with confidence. Now I know enough to know that when I'm having those bad weeks, I can still stand up in front of you all confident that God's going to do something. Because at the end of the day, it's not about me. And that goes for the the worship guys as well. What you guys do is amazing. You guys are able to hold up this church in worship and and praise God like you do and lead us in worship. Let me tell you something. You can do it in confidence. You never have to worry about whether or not God is going to anoint it. He has anointed it. Don't you think? Hmm? Good. So it's the times when I felt the weakest, where I'm not feeling so great, or so healthy, or where I may even be struggling with my own sin, maybe even struggling with my own temptation, where circumstances around me are difficult. Even when I'm around people um, uh, sometimes that I feel inferior to, I I do have an inferiority complex, I'll admit to you, just going to be vulnerable. There are people that threaten me. Am I the only one in the room, or is it others? Okay, there there are others as well. Um, I especially feel it when I'm around guys who have much larger churches than myself and then I'm asked to do something. Uh, I'll be like, uh, like that. In my, in, inside, I, on the outside, I look really tough and awesome. But on the inside, I'm just this little boy, boy curled up going, I don't know what to do. But I know now that when I'm feeling weak, I can walk confident. And I know that when I begin to walk confident in him, Things that I could never ever dream about doing begin to happen. And God begins to open doors that I never thought would be open. <laughs> it's crazy. I think while I was away, I, I stood up and preached at Jason's church. 
That's, that's a thousand people in that church. That's a big deal for me. I was scared about that. Like, oh, man, there's all these people in this church. And they all knew me when I was a boy as well, so they didn't know some of the naughty things I did. And Confidence. I remember this scripture always. This is one of my, let us approach God's throne of grace with confidence. You know, every Sunday morning when you step into worship, why don't you sing with confidence? When you begin to worship Him, just sing with confidence. Just sing with confidence. Your atmosphere will change because you'll actually be stepping into the, the favor of God that He actually has for you. Rather than staying in that corner of like, oh, I don't know, God. Just be confident. Be confident. We can enter His throne room with confidence. And the cool thing about this is that when you know that you can enter in to the throne room of God, the creator of the universe, like think of the most influential person that you can think of right now. I mean, who's a really influential person in this city that you'd be a little bit nervous about meeting? Throw a name out. Throw a name out. I heard Tata, Ratan Tata. Ambani's, okay, God made those people. He created them. He knew Ratan Tata before the inception of this world and all the other billions of people that have been since and that are still coming. He created every one of them. Think of the Himalayas. And the majesty, who's been up to there? Who's been up there? Up to You've seen the Himalayas. My gosh, what a place. Those mountains are something to behold. He created all of that. When I was down south from Perth, um, I got a shock because I've been living in Mumbai. I looked up in the sky, and this is a town of like 4,000 people or something. I looked up in the sky, and I saw stars, billions of the things. And I thought, wow, look at that. He created all of that. This God is big, and you have access to his throne room. Why the heck are we nervous about standing before any person? You can stand before kings. You can stand before presidents if you can stand before God. Be confident in him. Be confident in what he has for you. You have access. Mm. Lastly, the battle is won in him. The battle is won in him. He's willing to hear you. So be confident because the battle is won in him. The battle is won in him. Let's read from Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 20. This is also one of my favorites. Finally. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Uh, you guys want to come? But against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm, with, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is the, will of, which is the Word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions, with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert, and always keep on praying for all of the Lord's people. Pray also for me, that whenever I speak, words may be given me so that I will fiercely make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. 
pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. This is Paul reading to a church in Ephesus. And uh, at the time of writing this, he was actually in in prison. And uh, he had asked the people to pray for him. It's good to pray for your pastors. You can always pray for us. We need your prayers. I covet your prayers. I just want to go through this quickly. You know the belt of truth? Here's the truth. The battle you fight, your personal fight. Who's got a fight that they have to fight? Jesus won it. He's won it. It's won. It's won. The presence of God is here. God's about to do something really special in this place. This is also the truth. You were worth the fight. You were worth the battle. In the breastplate of righteousness, you know what the breastplate does? It covers your heart. It covers your heart. Your heart that was purified by God. Set free. There's some broken hearts in this room. There's girls here whose hearts were broken by the daddies. guys here whose fathers never saw in them the potential that they had. There's people here that are always trying to prove themselves. The breastplate breastplate of righteousness that Jesus wants to cover you with is to protect your heart. It's to protect what he put in you, your soul. Righteousness says that you are pure, that you are whole, that you are clean, that you're worthy. You're worthy. Put that on. Don't press place. You put on the belt of truth. That the battle is won. You put on the breastplate of righteousness that covers your heart. Put on your feet the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. See, the gospel of peace, see, the devil, what he wants to do is he wants to stop you in your tracks. The gospel says that you can keep growing in Christ and not stop. The devil, he wants to make you think you're stuck where you are. Let me tell you something that's a lie from hell. You're not stuck. The gospel says that as long as you keep looking to him, and turning from your your own will and turning from temptation. You just keep looking to Him and you can keep walking towards Him. He wants to say, no, no, hold on a second. This is the devil. He wants to say, no, you're chained here. This is your place. You're always going to be like this. You're always going to have this struggle. You're always going to, this is who you are. This is the way you've been brought up. It's your lot in life. The gospel of truth says that you can always grow. You can always move forward. The readiness, the readiness to walk, the readiness to walk. In addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith. You got the belt of truth, you got the shield of righteousness or the breastplate of righteousness. Your feet are fitted. You're moving forward. You take up this shield of faith, which can extinguish the flaming arrows of the evil one. When the devil starts to say, you're not strong enough, you can say, no, I'm not. But he is. 
you're going to fail. Well, the Bible says different. You're a failure. You know, he fought for me. And he died on a cross for me. You're not worthy. Yes, I am. You just keep fending off. No one's going to love you. No, no. I have this one that loves me. And he, he's a doting father. He went to all sorts of lengths to say, strong enough. You may not, you may have, even right now, you may be going through some stuff and you're like, I am not strong enough. That's okay. You don't have to be. But in Him you can be. In Him you can be. So I'm going to keep going over this because I want this to get into your heart. you got the, the belt of truth around your waist. you got the breastplate of righteousness protecting your heart. Your feet are fitted with the, with the, with the, with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. You've taken up the shield of faith. You take the helmet. Because this thing inside of your head, we all got one, hopefully. It's mind. You win up here, you win down here. A lot of our thinking will get us off track. get in, into our heads all sorts of ideas that are not the Word of God. That'll, that'll be different. We'll start thinking things about ourselves. We'll start thinking things about other people. We'll start thinking all sorts of crazy things about God, who He is, and what He thinks of us. Now we've got a helmet of salvation. We're saved. And there ain't any two ways about that. And let it protect our minds. And don't let anything else come in. Kind of whispers from our past. Whispers from from old relationships. Whispers from things and old memories. You know, some of you need to chuck photos out. Some of you need to chuck out old stuff that you're holding on to. It's time to let it go, man. Seriously, it's time to just, bah, it's not me anymore. That was past me. I'm dealt with there. God, he died on the cross for that. That's all rubbish. Let it all go. There's a future in Christ. There's a future in Christ. And I like that. I like this one. This helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit. Who knows what the sword of the Spirit is? Who's, who's got a Bible? That's your sword. Within your Bible are the keys that you need to succeed. Without it, we're lost. It's Christ's, it's God's love letter to you. You know that? It has the ability to change your life if you get it in. See, what, what happens when you read your Bible, it gets into your heart and it gets to change. The Holy Spirit empowers you and empowers that change. Read your Bible every day. Not because, oh, well, that's the thing that we do because we're Christian, but because it's actually going to help you. Um, while I'm talking about this, I did put a slide up there. It's, uh, it's a B-I-O-Y. Just put that up. This is an app you got to get on your phone if you don't have it. Okay? Take a photo if you can or whatever. Bible in one year. It's an app that has it all there for you. You can read your Bible. It has a few scriptures, and if you do this every day, in a whole, in one year, you'll read your whole Bible, the whole thing. Okay, I get everybody onto this. Okay, if you have any more questions about this later, you can take that slide off. And then it says, "Pray in the Spirit." all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests it doesn't really matter what you pray well what do I pray whatever you like there is the Lord's pattern of prayer our Father in heaven hallowed be thy name we've preached about that and I'll continue to preach about that at another time but let me tell you something it doesn't matter what you pray just pray just talk to him. He's there. He's waiting. Seek him. 
seek him. You don't have to be a rock star of being a prayer, rock star prayer, you know, some awesome prayer. Oh, wow, I've heard that other person pray. They always know what to say. I don't know what to say. It doesn't matter. Just, hi, God. Do you love me? Are you really there? Show me. Help me. He'll come. He's here right now. He's here right now. 